Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to an update on my Read 1001 Women's Books Before You Die project. Uh, next Tuesday, it's International Women's Day, so I thought because I don't upload on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I could maybe, but <laughs> it worked better on Sunday, like I always do. So I thought the Sunday before International Women's Day is the best, or at least for me, the best date to update you on that project. Um, if you're new or if you um, missed it, um, I am a, a list person. And I love reading, you know, lists. Um, and those books, 1001 books before you, uh, you have to read before you die, they always appeal to me. And Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot, she does that project. But the book list as such, they just didn't because it's like two thirds white guys. So I made my own list. Yes, spent two months in, <laughs> I think, in last year, end of last year to make a list with 1001. Uh, books by and about and or about women uh, that I want to read. And uh, there's a good read shelf. You can have a look. You can be inspired. You can uh, tell me what I missed uh, because I also made a shelf with possibles. We'll uh, get to that uh, in a minute. So when I filmed the first video about this new project in January, I think, uh, sometime I asked you guys whether you would be interested in updates and a lot of you reacted. Yes, updates, please. Not like every day, but maybe once a month. So I think that's what I will do um, once a month. And if there's not really a lot to tell in a month, then uh, I will skip a month, but once a month. Um, so the the numbers first, um, I have to look that up. Um, as of March the 1st, uh, I have 652 unread books on my uh, 1001 shelf. Uh, so I read 348. In February, I read four. I will talk about those in a minute. And in total in 2022, I read 12, which you can already see that January was, was a better month for this project than February. And also I removed one. And I will explain what I mean by that in a minute as well. Um, so the books that I read in January, the four books, I talked about all of them. So I'm not going to, you know, do lengthy. Oh, and before I forget, I will, there is a playlist, uh, 1001 women. So, you know, if you want to look at the first video or if you miss one after I have filmed 238 videos or something, they will be all in the playlist. So I'm not going to list all the videos uh, down in the description box. But anyway, the books that I read in January, I talked about them all in wrap-ups and recent reads. So I'm just going to mention them. Um, the first one was this, a short story collection by Rania Mamoun, uh, translated from uh, the Arab Arabic by Elizabeth Jacquet. Uh, Rania Mamoun is a, a Sudanese author, and this was the pick for Mel's Book Club in February, uh, Read Around the World Book Club. Um, it's I I, re, I enjoyed reading um, a really different experience, but not all short stories worked for me, as is always the case with short stories. Um, uh, and the next really thin book I read was a collection of poetry by Grace Nichols, uh, uh, an author from Guyana, um, The Fat Black Women's Poems. Um, and this was also a pick for a book club, The Invisible Cities Book Club. Um, and I... I enjoyed the poems probably, I, I heard mixed reviews about this collection, but I read very few poetry, so I'm always just amazed by people who are able to write poetry. And it's, um, again, like with the, uh, the 13 uh, Months of Sunrise, it's just a completely different experience from mine, and that has value for me as a reader already. Uh, I also read a non-fiction book together with Heidi from My Reading Life and Kim from Middle of the Book March about the Barbizon uh, by Paulina Bren, which gives the history of the famous Hotel for Women that was established in 1928 um, and is now a luxurious condo 
complex. Um, and the author talks about the women who stayed there, famous and non-famous, uh, who a lot of them uh, in the summer, they had an internship at Mademoiselle Magazine. So the book is also a lot about Mademoiselle Magazine. And I had my my qualms with the book, uh, but I still thought it's certainly worth while reading about the position of women in that time between 19, the late 1920s um, and let's say the 1960s or 70s. So um, those were the three. <laughs> then we get to this one. Um, the Red Queen by Margaret Drabble, published in 2004. This was a buddy read with Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot, because this was on my list, and it's also on her list. Um, I um, ranted about this book, well, more or less ranted, you know, I'm a very reasonable person, so I don't really rant, uh, but in my tops and flops of February. So this book was in the flops, because I thought it was um, not good uh, structurally, I don't didn't like the postmodern thing. It's historical fiction about a Korean princess um, in uh, the 1700s. Um, the neo-colonialism that I felt just irked me, um, and so this brought me to another um, conundrum with the list because Sandy just takes a list that somebody else made, you know, and reads it, and she didn't like it either. But that's okay. But because it's my own list, I felt it was weird that I would keep a book on the list that I really felt uh, didn't deserve a place on the list. Um, this was my only uh, Margaret Drabble, so I will have to think about the fact whether I will pick another book by her and put it on the list. Uh, but I removed this one and, um, you know, moved another one from the the shelf with the possibles uh, to the actual list. Um, I mean, it's not that I will remove every book that is not a four or five star book for me. That That is not my intention either. Like with the Barbizon, I had my misgivings, um, but I still feel the book has value and should be on that list if anybody is interested. But I can't in good conscience say, um, it didn't quite work for me, but you should read this book. With this book, I can't. So there will be books on that list, just to explain that I rate relatively low, like with two stars or something, but I still feel that they have value and should be on the list, uh, because sometimes it's just maybe personal taste, like Hilary Mantel, Wolf Hall. I was, the book bored the living hell out of me, but I can see that other people like it and think it's a good book and why. So I still feel this book has earned, so to speak, a place uh, on the list, but some books won't. And this is the first one. And so I made a new shelf, 1001 Women Removed. So you can have a look at all those. Anyway, so this was my uh, my February uh, summary. And now on to the books that I'm planning on reading in March. Um, first, a uh, couple of nonfiction books, three nonfiction books, um, um, Mona Cholet, In Defense of Witches, translated from the French by Sophie R. Lewis. Uh, this is a new release, 2022 release. And most of the books that I have here, I talked about on my book haul that I, uh, uploaded on Wednesday. So this is just what it says on the tin. It looks about what type of women was deemed to be a witch um, and why uh, throughout history. I thought that sounded really, really interesting and is certainly a book if I'm looking for women history, also books by women about women. That's why this book uh, made it on the list. Uh, the next one I already started, and it's the same story. It's a book by a woman about women, and that's uh, Laura Kaplan, The Story of Jane, The Legendary Underground Feminist Abortion Service. Um, this is a little bit older. It's from 1996, and it uh, tells the story of this Chicago underground 
a movement where a group of women helped other women uh, to get a safe abortion. And that group of women, they didn't work with their own names. They all called, called themselves Jane in order also to keep their identity private because the time, I should have said that in the beginning, the time um, that this organization operated in Chicago was the late 1960s until the early 1970s when abortion was still illegal everywhere in the US. So this is on the list. And then a book I already had, but I don't think I ever talked about it. Uh, a thin little thing I was down below by uh, Leonora Carrington. Actually, I was thinking of maybe saving this for August, you know, my my August quest to read 30 books in or, or July or August, uh, 30 books in 30 days. So this will probably be a bit on the back burner in March uh, because it's such a, a, a tiny little book that would fit very well in that 30 books in 30 days um, uh, challenge because I try to collect over the, the the year between you know September and, and July I try to collect books that are quite thin, quite small, in order to be able to finish 30 books. But anyway, this is a memoir. Um uh, Leonora Carrington, you might know her as a painter um in the uh, 19 uh, 40s, 50s. Uh, 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 but this book is about her um, struggle with mental illness after she had a psychotic breakdown in 1940. Uh, she met uh, the, the painter Max Ernst in the late 1930s. Uh, Max Ernst obviously was a Jewish painter. They lived in the south of uh, France and then um, the Nazi occupation uh, caught um, Max Ernst and put him in a concentration camp and as a result um, uh, Carrington suffered a psychotic breakdown and had encounters with the mental health system. And that is what this book is about. Um, then I have three fiction books. And again, I have an itch. I don't know why my nose always itches when I film videos. Um, the first one is uh, Janet Winterson, uh, The Power Book. This is also um, um, a kind of a maybe, because I have a lot of books already by her. This is from 2000, by the way, um, on that 1001 list. And I'm not sure how I want to approach authors that I really, really like, whether I feel that the whole body of work should be on the list. Like Jane Austen, for instance, I decided not to have all her novels on that list. So I will see how uh, I, I, I read this book years and years ago when it came out. So 20 years ago, probably. I can't remember a thing. And it's not locked on Goodreads because it was way before I was even a member of Goodreads. So I have to, it's not even I don't even qualify it as a reread. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I remember that it was kind of weird a little bit, that it had these short passages, uh, you know, like, uh, and it was about, um, it's night, I'm sitting at my screen, there's an email for me, I unwrap it, it says freedom just for one night. Um, Ali is an e-writer. They will write anything you like, but on one condition that you are prepared to enter your story. So it seems like a very a topical book for this time. Uh, I mean, she published this way before, you know, Patricia Lockwood uh, uh, published her novel last year, the year before, about the, the system, the Internet, Twitter. Uh, but anyway, my point is that I will see whether this will stay on the list and how I will deal with uh, Janet Winterson's work. Maybe I will just keep uh, two or three. And I have, at the moment, I have, I think, more than 40 possible. So there is enough uh, room for me to remove books and replace them uh, by other books. Um, the next one is, again, uh, a book that Mel picked for her Reader Around the World book club. The March pick is by Dasha Drindic, um, uh, EEG, uh, translated uh, from the Croatian 
ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. I couldn't remember the name when I hauled this book uh, last week. Uh, Celia Hawksworth, uh, published in um, uh, 2016 in the original and 2019 in the English translation. Dasha Grindic was a Croatian author who sadly passed away um, um, recently. This is a posthumous, her la last novel, posthumous, um, publication. And again, I had another book by her on the list, um, Belladonna, and um, I replaced it with this one because I'm now reading this one. Um, and there is also Trieste, I think, is on the list. And the same here with this author. Uh, should I have only one? Should I have two? I, I really admire her. I think she is a she was a, a, a fantastic author. Uh, she chronicles the time, the twentieth century, uh, in a really harrowing way, but also really good. So we'll see. Um, and the last one uh, is for the Invisible Cities project again uh, in March. The the choice of the organizers for the two countries is uh, Dominican Republic and Norway. And I didn't have a book uh, from the Domin Dominican Republic on the list. And the one I chose went on the list. Um, and that is a Rita Indiana Tentacle, uh, translated by this person here, which I already in my hall told you that I don't know how to pronounce and I couldn't find a pronunciation. So I'm just showing you. <laughs> um, this is a dystopian novel. Um, uh, with a uh, with a trans character uh, at the center, but the main story has something to do with the the dystopian world in twenty fifty eight or something uh, that people live in in the Dominican Republic, um, and I'm I have just started and it's yeah it's quite a wild ride, uh, but I think um, it's worthwhile uh, to be on the list. So. This is my read, the, the, the books I read in February for this project, and just in time for International Women's Day, my March picks. A lot of feminist reads, I would say. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm interested to hear how you would uh, approach the question of uh, you know, uh, how many works of a certain author should you include if you feel this author is really, really good or really important? Um, did I make a mistake by not including all of Jane Austen's novels? So, yeah, I'm interested in that and, of course, in all your other comments. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.